Hello, welcome to the Monday, December 7th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. And I'm done teaching in Europe, at least uh, virtually. Next class, well, a week from today, again, virtually online. And, well, uh, the sort of virtual location will be Washington, D.C. I'll be teaching the Defending Web Application Security class at CDI. Nothing terribly exciting in diaries uh, today. Uh, one scanner for proxy servers by Guy. Seeing a ton of these scans, uh, usually going actually for a more a common domain, something like uh, Google or Yahoo or such, uh, to see if they uh, can connect uh, to uh, that site. In this case, they looked for a very specific custom host name, which may indicate that they even uh, encode the IP address or such as part of uh, the host name. Of course, the goal here is for the attacker uh, to uh, then uh, use uh, the proxy if available in order to launch additional attacks. And you may have done it before, or maybe you saw others doing it, and that's where you pixelate certain parts of a document as you publish it in order uh, to protect, uh, for example, a password. And typically, a human is not able uh, to read uh, that hidden word, uh, but turns out that there is still enough information left to uh, properly recover whatever was typed. There is a new little script now written by uh, Sipke Malema, and uh, Sipke here uh, came up with a Python script that essentially uses the fact, the algorithm that all these tools use in order to pixelate text. First of all, uh, they're not really creating black and white pixels. They're creating various uh, shades of uh, gray, which of course uh, then holds some information about the original text. And while the recovered image isn't perfect, it's usually uh, close enough where you at least have a pretty good idea what the original text was. The script has been published on GitHub, so you can experiment with this and see if maybe any documents that you published with pixelated content can be reversed. And then we got a very brief uh, but potentially interesting vulnerability announcement from the Apache Tomcat project. Apparently, under certain circumstances, Tomcat may reuse HTTP headers between requests. Now, really not a lot known about this, like just the two, three sentences or little paragraph here in the vulnerability announcement. Uh, but one possible problem could be here that an attacker, for example, could reuse headers, like for example, uh, cookies or authentication headers from prior requests and with that impersonate users who have used a particular application in the past. This only happens with HTTP2 and essentially deals with these HTTP streams where uh, earlier streams are uh, sort of being uh, reused or data from earlier streams is uh, being uh, reused. Again, no exploit available and not a lot of details, but Apache has released patches for affected versions of Tomcat, and that would be 8.5, 9.0, and uh, 10.0. And Google released a new version of uh, Google Chrome fixing eight different security vulnerabilities, nothing super critical. So I would just let the automatic Google update uh, do its uh, trick and that usually works reasonably well. So in a couple of days, maybe double check that you're running the latest version of Google Chrome. And then just a little bit of reminder, I don't have a story uh, to link uh, to here, uh, but uh, as the holidays, of course, are approaching, there are a couple of scams that we typically uh, see increase during this uh, time. First of all, uh, gift card scams have uh, seen a couple uh, last week. Essentially, what happens here is that an attacker first compromises someone's email account and then uh, sends emails 
two uh, contacts asking for gift cards. Uh, this is particularly devastating if this sort of comes from a boss and then employees are buying these gift cards and sending it to the attacker. Also, there appears to be a sort of ramp up in scams that deal with the COVID vaccination that's sort of starting to roll out now. Most of the scams so far are basic phishing scams that claim to come from some kind of government authority and ask for personal information in order to register for some kind of vaccination. So these are some things that you may probably want to share with colleagues and family. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.